Ghana's current debt has ballooned from 122 billion Ghana cities at the end of 2016 to 170 billion cities at the end of September 2018. This amounts to a whopping accumulation of almost 50 billion Ghana cities debt in a space of less than two years. Currently, the MPP administration is only counting on a rebasing of the economy to show an artificially lower debt-to-GDP ratio, but which will still be totally out of sync with a historically low 11% revenue to GDP. In the fight against corruption, the NDC has a better record in terms of regime accountability. The NPP has proven in government that it is always reluctant to pursue their own, despite the swelling stench of corruption around their administration. All Ghanaians have received so far is lip service in the fight against corruption. A special prosecutor's office, their flagship anti-corruption instrument, remains starved of funds, personnel, and logistics to do its work. As I said in whole last year, and I quote, it does not take bravery to prosecute one's political opponent. The true test in the fight against corruption is holding your own people accountable when they go wrong. And so far, the president has failed this test. Most appallingly, the president has become the clearinghouse for clearing his appointees accused of corruption. He has on several occasions cleared his ministers and appointees when allegations of corruption have been made against them. Indeed, it was a very low day for Ghana when the president peddled a falsehood on a panel at the recent African Investment Forum that all allegations of corruption made against people in his administration have been investigated and cleared by independent investigative bodies. That was an obvious untruth. Even more worrying is the historic heights this administration has taken nepotism to. All comments referring to the large number of families and cronies serving in this administration have fallen on deaf ears. At the same time, insensitivity keeps manifesting in the high taxes, high port charges, high fuel prices, high transport fares, high commodity and food prices, high rent, high CD to dollar exchange rate, high national debt, and high levels of insecurity. Recently, in a barb aimed at my fellow aspirants and I, the president is quoted as saying, he does not respond to presidential aspirants. What I wish to remind Mr. President is that us presidential aspirants are also citizens. We are not spectators. As presidential aspirants are also citizens and not spectators. And we are only amplifying the voices of our fellow citizens. Mr. President can choose not to listen or respond to us. But eventually the citizens of Ghana would demand that response and exact a verdict on the issues that we have kept raising. As the chairman, in conclusion, Ghana surely is at a crossroads. And for that matter, the NDC is also at a crossroads. We must reach out to the people of Ghana with our alternative policy positions and programs to end the hardships they are suffering. We must curb job losses, we must eliminate incompetence, fight and make corruption unattractive, we must eschew nepotism and misrule and position Mother Ghana back onto the path of sustainable development. We have a track record of being the People's Party. And since 1992, under Jerry John Rawlings, through to John Eva Atamels, to my tenure, we have demonstrated our resolve to act in the interests of the people of Ghana. And we shall continue to do just that when the NDC comes back into office 
in the year 2021. My brothers and sisters, after today's exercise, when we put our 2018 to 2022 officers in place with other structures and organs of the party, we must and we shall organize a number of policy dialogues and conferences to put out our proposals and discuss details with industry, with business, with labor, with employers, students, farmers, fishermen, market women, etc. So that our conclusions are not only anchored in the social democratic philosophy of our party, but also meets the hopes and aspirations and desires of all these people. This is why we must elect a formidable and experienced team today, a team that will fortify the already elected regional constituency and branch officers to accelerate the process of reorganization and to steer the affairs of our great NDC for victory in 2020. I wish all the contestants participating in the elections today good luck, may the best candidates win, and may we display great sportsmanship by continuing to act together even if we lose the elections in the interest of our party. We must unite for Victory 2020. My brothers and sisters, unity is crucial, and I believe with unity, respect for one another, mutual trust, focus, dedication, and determination, we shall exert ourselves and work hard to recapture power for the development of Ghana and change the current narrative of majority of Ghanaians living in hardship to that of a shared prosperity for all of us. Let us put our shoulders to the wheel. With Christ in our vessel, we smile at the storm. Let the work begin.